Okay, welcome back everybody. We are going to get started with our second session with some of our uh, top scorers in AFK. Uh, so I'd like to introduce, uh, firstly, Dr. Alice Granton. And Dr. Alice scored 100 <laughs> in AFK in, I believe, the first cycle of 2019, it was? The, uh, the August cycle of 2019, okay. Um, and we have Dr. Yash Baringa, who is our most recent grad. I think you scored the highest in Canada, possibly? In, in AFK, yes. Uh, which was a very challenging exam cycle, I believe, as well. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. <laughs> it was challenging indeed. <laughs> of course. And we also have Dr. Shokat El Sakati, who also was in the same cycle, I believe, as uh, Alice, who scored 100 as well. And in Calgary, we have Dr. Rajvant Chima. Dr. Rajvant was our third uh, 100 scorer in the same cycle as these two doctors. Um, and a 100 score, uh, although we had three in that cycle, I, I believe it's the first time we've ever had that. And we've, we've never had it since as well. So it was, it was an extraordinary feat, I believe. And uh, we would love to know how you did it, of course. <laughs> so I think we'll just, we'll, we'll try to get into a Q&A as quickly as possible so you guys can uh, ask as many questions as possible. Um, but I, I just wanted to start out by asking, and anybody can jump in, um, what was the, the, the exam experience like for you? from, I guess, the moment that you registered for the NDEB and then to the moment where you got your passing grade. Um, just, just give us maybe a little bit of a summary. Yes, uh, very nice to see you guys here. I remember I was in your shoe three years ago. I can feel you guys, I understand. Uh, it is a tough process. I remember when I registered, I'm just answering the question, when I registered for the NDB, I, I, I usually take things seriously from day one. <coughs> um, not only this exam, in every aspect in my life. And specifically this exam, I asked a lot before coming to Canada. And um, all the people agreed that it requires discipline. And it's a choice you make. So from day one, came here, um, registered in the NDB. The NDB, I already registered before I come here, so I had this in place. Uh, papers are accepted. If not, then I have a chance to correct the papers from back home. So that's why I made sure I correct all the papers. Came here, I got to know PRIP doctors, started the course. Now, the one thing I should mention, I know a lot of people have responsibilities uh, families, uh, you need to afford a living, of course. You come in a new country, not all the... So for, for me, I came by myself. I had the privilege or the flexibility of studying only. <coughs> it's very hard to do um, for people that have family. Of course, you need to afford a living, you need to work. Um, thank, thank God now we have the accessibility to line of credits. Um, I really encourage you guys to take a line of credit if you can, if possible. I always like to take it one shot, as Dr. Marwan said. Get it, get it done, get a line of credit, finish it in six months, get a good score, and move on. Instead of trying to work, trying to get money, uh, trying to pass the exam, you might not pass it, etc. So I, I registered with PEP doctors, started from day one, following their schedule. I wasn't uh, influenced by other uh, teaching institutions or people that trying to guide me through other uh, resources. I chose one source, stick to the schedule, followed their um, schedule correctly, finishing the lectures, going back to study, attending the quizzes, studying what we took every week. So it was an 
a nine to five job for me every day. After five, I get to do whatever I want. Um, and then, I paid for the exam. I was not working at all for the whole six months. So that's my story with the exam. And then, obviously, I got the results. Everything was worth it. I was really happy. And then, I continued the process. Okay, and, and uh, Dr. Shokut, you, yeah. of course, attended uh, U of T. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later yeah, I was about good. your process of getting into university. I wanted to come to you, um, Alice, and I, I remember finding out that you actually uh, practiced dentistry in the military in Brazil. And one of the questions that we often get is, does my background, is that going to help me or hinder my my study process in AFK, what, what was it like for you? So I apologize for my voice. <laughs> it's not COVID though. No problem. Um, I have this allergy, but um, I couldn't miss this session today. Thank you all for coming. And um, yeah, um, the military background actually helped me with uh, being organized. Because I believe being organized in this process is the key. I was very organized from the beginning. So, um, as you know, in the military we have the standard operation, operating procedures. So, you have to follow protocols. And that kind of helped me um, going through whatever I had planned and achieve the result that I got. So, um, also, I know that in the military, we, we go through a lot. We actually go through a lot of like mental, um, they, they're gonna tell you you're not gonna be able to do it and then you're just gonna grow um, stronger. So I wasn't listening to whatever people were saying because you're gonna see a lot of people are gonna have nervous breakdowns. They're gonna tell you a lot of stuff, but I, I was immune to that. I was concentrated, I was focused, I wasn't as organized as childhood. My papers were not accepted in the beginning, so I needed to take another exam. So I kind of waited. I studied for almost nine months, but at the end we, we got the same result. Uh, I'm going to come to you in a second, uh, Yash, um, but I wanted to go to Dr. Rajvant in Calgary. One of, the, one of the, the most common questions that we often get is, what is the experience like studying in a remote center? So you're not here, the lecturer is not standing right in front of you as they are in Mississauga. Uh, was that challenging and, and how did you manage to get 100 from a remote center? Well, uh, when I registered for the course itself, um, I did have my reservations regarding the same issue that how will be how will how interactive it will be actually from remote center. But once the course started, even from the first class, um, I did not feel like there was any kind of barrier to me asking questions or understanding anything. Um, I might have turned out kind of annoying maybe on the mic for other people asked lots of questions on the mic all the time but for myself and then my results shows too that i did not find i did not hesitate you know if i had any doubt i would just go ahead and ask the instructors um so remote location was not such a big issue for me and i would say that for anyone else who wants to join from the remote locations too basically just depends on you even if you are sitting on site as well if you hesitate to ask something, it's the same thing. Just pick up the mic, ask what you want to ask, clear your doubts. The instructors are very accommodating. Um, even I haven't uh, found any instructor frustrated with people asking same questions or similar things and again and again. So yeah, don't hesitate. Get your concepts clear because that's all it comes down to in the end. How clear your concepts are. You cannot just, you know, learn or cram everything. When your concepts are clear, that's how your result is better. So yeah, in remote, remote location, I would say 
that barrier is insignificant. Amazing. So let's bring it back here and uh, with you, uh, Yash. Um, you passed out in the most recent exam cycle. You had to deal with COVID <laughs> and exam cancellations and, and, and all of those things. What was the experience like for you? Uh, to be honest, because uh, I've been with Prep Doctors since day one, since I have registered with uh, NDEB, I have been uh, known that this was the best institute. I didn't know anybody here at that time. But once I got here, uh, I was taught by uh, doctors, Dr. Marwan, Ibrahim, Dr. Khalid, all of these people, amazing instructors. I was uh, very happy that I'm getting the knowledge and guidance that I am. It is extremely stressful, I wouldn't uh, lie about that. It, it, it is what it is. You have to put in a lot of hard work. And I was uh, stressed out. But as your question is uh, about 2019 versus, uh, to, because that, that's when I actually started. 2019 September was the first time I attended coaching with you people. And uh, but uh, because of my paper delay, I wasn't able to go for the February, even though I felt mm, absolutely prepared for it. Corona happened, the whole exams never happened. Next February, the exam got canceled. I had to deal with so many uh, of these delays, which actually burdens your patience and it frustrates you because you keep on uh, revising the same things over and over and you keep forgetting the dosages. Concepts remain, but the details go away. The dosages, the millimeters, all those things. And uh, But when this specific exam ha was to happen yeah. in 2022 February, uh, from what I had been hoping for or what I've been preparing for, it was kind of more, uh, I could say I was more skeptic, I was more suspicious of the exam. The reason being, they changed the pattern from 300 to 200. So every question meant more, every question had more weightage. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. And since the last cycle, uh, the people from there, the friends who I had, they were even more scared about it. Like, uh, Yash, this is not going to be that. The, you cannot, uh, the, the things that you have been preparing might not be relevant anymore. But again, yes, it uh, was a big shift from the attitude I had for the exams in previous cycles as compared to this one. But in the end of the day, what counts is the knowledge, what the, the, the real hard work. There's no, again, there's no <laughs> shortcut. There's no way to go around it. You just have to know your things. You have to be extremely dedicated, sincere, and prioritize this over everything else in your life. As Dr. was saying exactly, the principle still remains the same. You have to work hard, very hard. And just, and in that specific uh, matter, as uh, our doctors, Dr. Marwan and Dr. Ibrahim, keep on emphasizing on the same thing, that you just have to study, follow them, and they know better because they have so much experience over the last 10 years of teaching this course. They definitely know more than you do. So just follow their lead, and I promise, like, it's going to work out for you, 100%. <laughs> okay, let's get into the juicy stuff. <laughs> Exam tips. What, what, are, what are some of your, your top tips? Let's get into this. it. Exam tips. Okay. So as I said at the beginning, discipline, please. Um, try, I know it's hard, but try as much as you can to not work during AFK. I understand if you want to work in ACJ, like I personally did. AFK is very tough to balance. And for me, I try to minimize the probability of errors as much as I can. By me doing so, I would rather take a line of credit, get a loan, pass this exam as quickly as possible, than just work and I don't know if I'm gonna pass or not. So that's number one tip. Try as much as you can. <clears throat> For studying strategies, concentrate on one concept. Um, I'm gonna be more clear. <coughs> Do not study other sources. Anything else, moss bees, dental dicks, not related. Um, it's not a reference for NDB. Don't waste your time. It's only one source. Choose one source, get your concept clear. If they ask a question, you know the answer from one source. So you don't, get, you don't have time to think in the exam. Let's say if you have an answer from three resources, that's, sure, that, that, that's fine. If I ask you in public, what's your opinion? You can have time to discuss. In the exam, you do not have time to think. So you need to have one source. That's tip number two. 
Now, for answering the questions, it's very important to know that studying and taking courses is not enough, and it's not going to get you the questions in the exam. So as, as many practice questions that we're going to have here, it's not going to be the same as the exam. The exam mostly going to be a little bit different. Um, the only thing I can emphasize is going to give you the straight main concepts clear. When you see the question, you can eliminate wrong answers. So my strategy in every exam is not looking for the correct answer, is eliminating wrong answers. So let's say you have, they keep repeating the same question all over again, but different options. So let's say in cycle 2018, same, uh, same question, and then in 2020, the same question, different options. So be surprised by reading the question, oh, I've seen this question before, and then you go through the answers, it's totally different. Um, don't ask me how they get another answers for the same question, but they do. Um, so, but still, by eliminating wrong answers, you will be fine. Don't jump, I know sometimes you find, oh, this is an easy question, I'm just gonna get up to the correct answers. Most probably it's not gonna be the correct answer. They have a more correct answer than the last cycle. So eliminate the wrong answers until you reach, you're most probably gonna reach for two, and then that's your personal judgment, that's the course, that's your discipline, that's your studying, that's the practice, and that's what we do here in Prep Doctors. Um, yeah, these are my main tips for the exam. Concentrate, do what you have to do, and then guidance, leave it to the course that you chose, which is I personally tried Prep Doctors, and I'm working now here. Um, that means I love this institution, and I trusted this in institution from day one. So, um, regarding tips, I, I mentioned before being organized, and um, I would always um, set my schedule two weeks ahead, so I would be able to accommodate all the books, and uh, being organized and preparing yourself to study, for me, is, was always important because I would separate whatever books I needed for the next day and I would tie it up my desk because that just make that, that always makes it more appealing. So I was working eight, nine hours a day as an assistant. So you know, for the ones who worked as an assistant, you know how heavy work it is. And I was super tired. So if I did not have a schedule to follow through and all my books separated, I wouldn't study. So I always force myself to be organized. And also, what Dr. Malwan mentioned, it's very important to answer questions. I was always answering questions. In the release questions, if I was either in the subway with no reception, if I was like every single day, I would separate at least an hour, let's say, to write questions. Because I know some of you do not have English as their first language, which was my problem. So for us, it's not just about knowing the concept, it's also about understanding how to read the questions. And I knew that it was my problem in the beginning. So keep your hopes up, you'll be fine. And um, I think I had another tip, but I forgot. I can come back later. <laughs> no problem. Uh, as far as my uh, experience uh, in studying and what I can uh, tell you about it is that to begin with, I prefer making notes for myself because uh, a lot of black and white books is going to be too monotonous. It's going to make you tired. It's gonna, you, you're going to keep reading the text and text the, the, the whole font is the same, the color is the same. I like making notes. So try to make notes, important, important facts. Facts cannot be changed, right? Concepts is one thing. Uh, you can break down concepts, obviously. I did for myself, but factual knowledge, just put a, put a line with different color. You know, that is one way to remember things. That's, what I, that's my first tip. Second of all, when it comes to uh, the course, now imagine like five years of dentistry or, you know, and a lot of gap between that. 
how do you recapitulate everything? And they're gonna do it in five months. So much, so much stuff. What I used to do is, before the topic's gonna be discussed, I just skim over it. Because once they start speaking, you cannot just say like, oh, I don't remember this at all. Now what do I do? I, I can't understand. I'm gonna go home and now read. If you skim over it before, one night before, one day before, just try to keep ahead. Because eventually by the end, you're gonna be lacking, uh, lacking behind if you start ahead. And uh, third thing that I would say is your, uh, your schedule. It should be, again, like everybody has responsibilities. I can't uh, say anything about it. You know your situation better than I do. But what I would say, just specific to this uh, course, you need to prioritize your uh, study, study schedule. Like, make sure, for example, if you know you can sit for eight hours, I, I personally used to sit for 10 hours or even more because I did not have any responsibilities as such, and I was lucky for that. But anyway, if you have decided, okay, eight hours is a must for these five months before my exam, those eight hours, you work everything around it. So 24 hours, eight hours of sleep gone, and you're left with what, 16 hours? Now how do you break that, eight hours and eight hours? So that's how I like it. It's, uh, it's just a template I'm giving you. You can do it yourself. So schedule is important, study and everything around it. And uh, the next would be, as uh, the course goes on, uh, you are so saturated with knowledge. You have so much knowledge. If you have been studying, obviously, uh, after five months, you have so much information, so much information, it's like you're just bubbling with it. Now, the biggest challenge comes is uh, to time the question paper because you just have so many minutes for so many questions to do the whole exam. So what happened while I was in the exam itself was uh, uh, during the break time, it was I think 45 minutes, one hour, one of my colleagues, a very, very bright student, she had been, we had been, uh, we had this friendly competition amongst ourselves that who's gonna score more in this quiz and the next one. So very bright student, very good person. She comes up to me crying in the middle of the exam uh, during the break time and she says, Yash, I just missed 15 questions. I'm like, how did that happen? Out of the 100, first 100, she missed 15. And the only thing was, she was taking so much time over analyzing the question. For example, you have a calculation, you take five minutes. And now you have 30 seconds each for, next, for the last five. So timing is one of the biggest things that you have to practice and it can't happen overnight. During the mocks, it's already too late. So when you're doing the things, one, one and a half minute max per question, and then you go on with that. I have so many more tips, but these are the ones that I'm gonna stick to for now. <laughs> okay, Thank great. Let's, let's just go to, to Calgary sure. for uh, Dr. Rajwan. I think like everyone said, having uh, making a schedule and then sticking to it. So for example, what I would do it on the weekend, whatever topics we covered in classes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, go through all of them and do questions related to them. And then last two days, Thursday, Friday, read whatever we're going to do on the next week, like on the weekend. So that way you are, you keep up with whatever you learn. You're not forgetting those concepts. And then of course, you're not sitting in class blank thinking that oh, what's going on, I have no idea what this material is. You need to be familiar with the material before you come into the classes. Only then you'll be able to, oh, I know I did not understand this concept. Let's just ask, let's try to understand this. That's the only way it will be interactive. And I worked, um, so same thing. Um, you can work during prep only and only if you have a schedule to stick to. I still know that I need to study for nine to 10 hours a day. So you sleep less or you, you know, no leisure time, the days you're working. So you have to kind of cut on something, make adjustments somewhere, but you cannot make adjustments in that you allow yourself to study. Um, one other tip that I had that is, that only applies to oral pathology. We had lots of questions over pathology, but for me, same thing, pictures. Just keep looking at the pictures. So just theory, studying theory. So things like that. Little things. Okay, we, we're starting to lose you, Dr. Rajron. So we'll, we'll bring it back here um, and open the floor for questions. Um, but I, I do have a bunch of questions from Zoom about universities. 
Okay, so I wanted to let uh, Dr. Shokat and Dr. Rajvan talk about their experiences. Uh, Dr. Shokat, talk to us about uh, how your your AFK score influenced your decision to go to university. Uh, why did you uh, choose the University of Toronto, and and how did you get in? Okay, uh, very good question. Thank you, Osman. Um, so, I I already have uh, like had a. I thought about universities from before, I was known as one well. used to talk about universities and uh, I was thinking if I get a high score, I'm definitely going to apply for university for reasons like if I want to do a specialty, if I want to work in the States, I would have more open doors uh, for me. I'm single, no kids, no responsibilities, so why not? Right? Yeah. So. Um, that was my first uh, thought, and then I got the score, 100, obviously I was like, this is a sign from God to not commit to family. I'm joking, but no, like, <laughs> do, do the university rock. Uh, it's a big loan, it's a big commitment, uh, two years and a half, even three years for some universities, but I was very confident, and I was almost ready to do the ACJ exam, I already registered, I finished the course, and I, I, like, I was about to not go. My family kind of forced me to go, it was like, you already registered, so why not? Go try it out, go have fun. Went to the ACJ with a very peace of mind that I'm just going to try the exam. Thankfully, I passed, so that means uh, the stress part is the thing that makes you, if, if you go to an exam without a stress, this is, uh, a fun experience. I was having fun. Yeah, looking at x-rays, I was choosing whatever I feel like choosing. If I see it, I'll choose it. Yeah, it was very fun because I was 100%, I was, I was having, it was hard to apply universities. I didn't think about that, but at that time, I was like, okay, I'm confident that I'm gonna get any, any university that I want. So, I want universities, why would I waste my energy on something else? I did the exam, thankfully I passed, started to apply universities, and then I got the shock that COVID is happening, a lot of cancellations. So the first shock was when I applied to Saskatchewan University, the day before the exam, after I prepared everything, after I finished all the mocks, it was a, a bench exam. I finished the last mock, I was getting ready to travel, and then I checked my email at the end of the night. So the email was sent in the middle of the day that we're canceling the flights, we're shutting down the country, I didn't know I was doing the mock, right? We're shutting the country, we're shutting flights, no more exam. And that was the first shock for me. Okay, so University of Saskatchewan is out of the way. I waited a long time for it. And then other universities come, some of them were canceled, some of them were postponed, some of them will change the criteria, some of them will change the documents. Uh, it took me a lot of energy and time, and then I realized, okay, even if I get 100, it's not for granted, right? Some things can happen to affect your um, your way of thinking. And then, thankfully, I got U of T. Um, I prepared well for it as well. Uh, I took a course with prep doctors. Um, U of T was uh, a very unique interview process, very short, uh, to the point, no bench exam. They just want to get to know you. 10 minutes, so you prepare for the interview for a long time and then 10 minutes they evaluate you so you need to be very careful how you're presenting yourself um, i got lucky i got accepted and here i am i'm fourth year uh, dds student in university of toronto and hopefully gonna graduate soon let's bring it back here um with you dr alice you decided to go through the equivalency process and not uh, take up a place in a university. Yes, I did. So, so talk to us about that decision, and congratulations, you just passed your board exams. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Give her a round. The results were yesterday. She, Thanks. She, this is fresh, she just got the <laughs> results. So that's fantastic. Talk to us about your, your choice and, and uh, okay. your experience. And my voice is not due to celebration. I was like this before, okay? So, um, um, when I got 100, we were always talking, me and Shaukat, um, about going to university. And Shaukat was always telling me, 
go to school, go to school, you got a good score. And I always told him my reasons. He has his reasons and I had mine. I'm married. I'm not in my early 20s. At some point I have to decide, like, am I gonna have a baby or not? So you know how the pressure is kind of different for women. And um, I actually had a very good experience back home. I, I worked as a dentist for 10 years. I even got a specialty degree in implantology there. And in the army, I was only working with implants. So I kind of felt confident uh, working here as a dentist without going back to school. But um, anyway, COVID hit. I was desperate because I took AFK in August 2019 and it passed. And then we took uh, judgment in November and we passed as well. And I was supposed to take skills in June 2020, but we know what happened in March 2020, everything closed and um, I was kind of hopeless. So I actually, I was only able to take skills last year, December 2021. So in the middle of this situation, like mental health was not doing very well. I was like, I need to think of a plan B. So I did apply to university and um, I told I'm gonna go and I'm only gonna apply to University of Toronto because my husband works here and um, like, I'm only gonna stay here and uh, I got accepted. So, um, and I actually started. So I started in January. I took the skills in December. I had no idea if I had passed or not because skills is a whole different level. Let's take baby steps. But um, when the results came in, I decided to drop out. So um, it was just, I, it wasn't my dream. And uh, there's someone else in my spot now and she's very happy and I'm very happy as well. So I think it all worked out. Worked out. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, I, I do have a question about how to manage your mental health. We're talking about schedules, we're, we're talking about, there's a lot here that we're talking about. And I, and I wanted to ask uh, one of our other top scorers, Dr. Zaina Daus, um, if you wanted to maybe talk about how to manage your mental health whilst going through this process. Dr. Zena is in our skills course right now and top scored in ACJ. So if we could just give her a mic. Yeah. Um, hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is Zena. Um, good question, actually. Um, it's, one, it's one of the main things I always mention in my um, social media and whenever someone asks me about AFK, ACJ or skills. <laughs> When it comes to mental health, um, the number one thing is to surround yourself with good people. Like have good friends, have good family that don't doubt you or say, oh, you, you might not make it or it's too expensive or something like that. So that's one thing. Um, another thing is to manage your stress with things that you like to do. You don't have to study 12 hours a day if it stresses you out too much. Like have at least one day in the week that you can just do something that you like. Um, like going on a walk, doing your favorite hobby. Um, yeah, just those two main things. And if anyone wants to add anything. Excellent. I have something to add to that as well. Definitely, as a doctor, it said that, that these are very, uh, these are amazing tips. But one more thing that I like to uh, add into this is because sometimes people are very introverted, right? They don't like to surround themselves with many people, especially in these kind of situations. They want to be by themselves and manage their stress by themselves. For them, this tip would be helpful because when we see the whole process, let it be university or let it be equivalency, 
uh, we see this huge mountain in front of us like it's it's a lot of steps it's a lot of process and uh, the finance the time the timelines uh, for example if somebody does uh, AFK in February 2022 the earliest he can look forward to graduating from a university is 2026 because application process then the admission process then the two to two and a half or three years of university it seems overwhelming so in those situations that stress how did I manage it I used to just think of okay what's in my control the only thing I can control is my uh, next step it, like absolutely the next step the next day probably this day and the next day how I'm gonna do things this week or this weekend I'm gonna study and I'm gonna just work for this one quiz that the prep doctor is gonna prep doctor has told us it's gonna be right so one step at a time forget the whole process forget the whole timeline just focus on right now and one step at a time that's gonna work wonders for you as far as stress is concerned those uh, sometimes it's two weeks sometimes it's 10 days so uh, I would say for example if you have 10 days and on our hand by the time we get to the day of exam things are extremely heightened right everything in your life seems it's it's too much work too much stress how do I remember the things that I learned three months ago what I would say is in those two weeks the only thing that you should work on is uh, practicing questions because right now if you're trying to learn something it's already too late you should have done it five months ago if you want to learn concepts from scratch or you left out something that's not how it's gonna work what I would say is just relax get up in the morning brush up on uh, the digits the numericals the things that you have to just memorize there's no concept behind them for example dosages of what uh, these uh, prophylaxis medicines or these uh, antibiotics for perio or something just an example right keep brushing up on them because you tend to mix them up and these are simple questions straightforward ones you just need to know the dose right it's easy number two you just practice keep practicing the question banks that you have for practice itself because again timing and knowing how to solve questions is one of the biggest challenge that you're gonna have other than the knowledge that you have accumulated five months a lot of study has happened four mocks have happened and approximately thousands of questions that doctors have discussed with you and you have done yourself so these 10 days is all about just holding on to it keep going and just chilling last one day maybe two days don't even do nothing that's that's pretty much it and the morning you wake up for the exam have a look do not even try to study because what you have done so far is much more than enough so <clears throat> you need guidance um, so let's say we're talking about the American exam right so now I'm preparing for the American exam there's a lot of resources online it's a very predicted exam um, the good thing about the exam is the answers are open to everyone. They share the answers, they share the exams. That's the US exam. So for that one, you can do that by yourself. <clears throat> for the Canadian one, um, you need guidance. As, as Dr. Marwan and Dr. Ibrahim mentioned, uh, the ref uh, the, yeah, sorry. The references are 140 textbooks. Um, that's a lot for you to reference and at the end the answers are not from the textbooks they're from the universities or the, uh, their education so uh, there's a lot of gray areas um, guidance is, and you have three attempts that's another issue in the American you can take it as much as you can I'm just giving examples I don't have anything against the American board I'm doing it myself but it's very predicted and you can do it tomorrow you can do it after 10 days you can book it now you can rebook it Life is very chill in the U.S. Uh, I would like to add to what Doctor uh, was uh, talking about here. Exactly what he says about American exam is absolutely what he says because it's a, a personal experience actually. After December, we had our first mock already, and we were having a break because second mock was in the first week of January. I was so uh, frustrated with the whole process since I've been delayed because of the COVID. And uh, what I did was, I randomly, I, it, it's, it's in praise of doc, prep doctors actually, I randomly uh, booked my US exam on 31st of December, 
and I wanted it to be after my AFK. But you know what happened? There was no spot for three months because I don't know what whatsoever. I had one position open for exam on 5th of January. So in the stress of exa exam, I did not even study till four, four days after 31st. I did not even study. Because prep doctors had prepared us so well for everything, I just went for it and cleared the first uh, attempt. Before AFK, I had the result for the American exam itself. So <laughs> you can imagine. I'm going to add something to that because personal experience, I actually tried to do self-study for AFK. Um, it's too much. It's too much material. You don't have any structure. You don't have any guidance. That's what I found different with the course itself. You, It gives you structure and you can actually build your schedule on that structure. It's not possible to build a nice practical schedule if you don't get prep doctor notes. I'm just going to word it like that. Because if you start counting the references, how will you put it in eight to 10 hours of daily study for six months? You cannot. You'll go crazy with that. And especially if you have kids, you have family or you have work, it's not possible at all. So that's how, that's where the course come in. It gives you that structure and you, as long as you just stick to that, you don't get confused. You don't mix up your concepts and just keep focusing. And that's how you get good score in the exam. Personally, I don't like studying in a group. I would rather study by myself, but I don't mind. If someone asks ask me a question, I'm totally in for explaining. But uh, I feel like I'm more concentrated studying by myself. So I can pace myself and take my breaks whenever I want. And, uh, you know, I'm very chatty. So pr probably studying in a group, I would be talking about something else. And um, I just feel it's easier for me to concentrate. But um, I know that study groups work for some people. I have something very important that I would like to add, actually. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a person who loves to study by himself as well. I, I'm not that good with group study, but I kind of uh, found out, realized there's a hybrid approach to it. You can actually mix and match both things. How so? What I started doing, uh, what I started to do in 2019, September, when I started the course, my papers were taking too long to uh, get registered by the NDEB, and uh, they did not approve my papers in time to register for February. So deadline passed, I was unable to register. That's, that's how my first attempt I was never, never able to make, even though I did the course with the doctors. So what happened, because I was doing the course anyway, and I knew that I wouldn't be able to make the exam, my papers were never done. What I started to do was, uh, there were from some friends I made, and they're, they're really close to me even till now. They were kind of struggling with some things, and I had very clear concepts as a, as a foundation, because even in my university days, I used to study very hard, and I used to do things very carefully. So he was struggling with some things. I started to, uh, to, to learn myself and to uh, get more good at those specific things that prep doctors were teaching. I started teaching him after doing the lecture. I would do the lecture, then explain the whole lecture to, to my friend and concise it, brief it up, or try to break down the whole idea. It was even more helpful for me. Even though my friend went for the exam, he's, he got the position for the AFKC, he went for the exam, and he was like, he was so skeptic, uh, will I pass or not? I'm like, okay, I'm actually right now Dr. Marwan's medium, so I'm just gonna give, transmit his knowledge to you in my own way, right? And he got 86 that cycle. I wasn't able to make it that way. <laughs> so yeah, you can explain it to your peers, to, uh, as, a, as a group study, they'll do a benefit, and you'll get your concepts even stronger. Uh, in my opinion, like uh, if I have to uh, advise you something, the thing is, after all, dentistry is universal. Uh, we technically have the same kind of education anywhere we have studied, right? So, the again, like, how can you change a concept? How can you change TMJ from India to, you know, uh, Egypt or Canada, TMJ is gonna, gonna remain TMJ. Learn anatomy, learn learn prostodontic concepts like uh, Kennedy classification kind of things. You need to be brushed up on these ideas, according to me, because once you start the course, then they're gonna go in detail of what's uh, gonna be more beneficial for you to study. But as far as that's concerned, I would say just pick up your books from university, and that's that's pretty much it. And focus on third and fourth year of uh, bachelors. That's the most helpful. 
so let me tell you what I did as my personal opinion uh, so now I'm gonna get back to the American exam you can study their resources a little bit temporarily not to be biased by them a lot of guidelines are different but as the doctor said dentistry is dentistry um, if you have a good lecture notes from your university that's fine I didn't get any so my only resource was dental dicks for example I had it handy I had a lot of free time before starting the course why not I'm brushing up over the knowledge and it really helped me a lot and I did my uh, London exam in UK MJDF so I revised as well their exam kind of similar still guidelines are different but the main concepts remain the same so I'm just keeping up with the knowledge keeping up with the updates the recent articles are very important on the NDEB website a lot of people forget this if you have free time read the articles it's a lot of articles but once you open and read it it's only three four papers uh, three four pages I mean um, articles get the most questions mostly especially if they're recent articles so you can also get new like let me give you an example there was a new article about the silver diamine fluoride silver diamine fluoride two three years ago no one knew about it now it's more common they're teaching in university we had a lot of questions about this topic and where you can find this recent articles published in the NDB NDB gives you the link for it not published by the NDB but you can find it you can find the link there I would <clears throat> sorry I would mention the articles as well because um, you will actually have the guidelines there a lot of them are gu guidelines so recently you had a change in the prophylaxis so um, that's new so you could start with the articles I'm I'm a huge fan of the articles because if I feel like they're the most up-to-date information that we have because sometimes books let's say for example Carranza you're gonna read something in the first chapter and then in the third chapter that same information changes and you're like what's going on but in the guidelines in the articles you have it very straightforward so you could start with the articles and start picking up from that okay uh, so as I mentioned focus on the main concepts not the guidelines that st like let me give you another example um, the thing on top of my mind the fluoride for example the fluoride less than three years of age if the child is not high care risk we don't give toothpaste with fluoride over here in Canada and US they do so there's small things that differ you we don't want to get into that I would rather come in into the course with a fresh mind not with someone conflicting like for me I would rather come in, in the course knowing that we don't not give fluoride for children less than three if they don't have a uh, uh, carries risk then oh but I read in the US article that this and you start asking and arguing with the instructors or you might even doubt yourself you go back so I try to minimize errors as much as I can. I'm a very practical person. Anything that can divert my focus, I just leave it. No, I just, no need to waste energy. Guidelines are different. Why would I read it? Co uh, dentistry, sure. Kennedy classification, as the, as the doctor mentioned. Lab work, a lot of lab work. What's happening in the lab, what's happening in the clinic. Uh, patient management, emergencies, they're still the same. Syncope is syncope in US or in Canada, right? Even in the Middle East, it's the same thing. Although there is more common maybe, but yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's still the same concept. So focus on dental facts. Let's, 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 let's put it this way. Thank you. And also uh, things change throughout the process. I mentioned the change in the prophylaxis because when I took the AFK, it was one thing. And when I went for the boards in May, it changed and when you grasp to the concept and you were you are attached to the concept it's very hard for you to let it go and I was very attached so um, I think it's easier to come with a clear mind than to focus on something that you have to change afterwards okay absolutely thank you so much doctors we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to join us here thank you good night